Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this very important uh, conference. I will share my screen now and uh, uh, I will focus in my talk since uh, I am the Chief Medical Officer of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. I will talk about the role of professional societies in supporting cancer care uh, in conflict regions, lessons uh, from global efforts. So when we talk about the role of professional societies in supporting cancer care in conflict zones, uh, these are the questions that we at the American Society of Clinical Oncology uh, consider. When should we respond? We want to use objective criteria, and we want to make sure if we do respond that it's aligned with ASCO's mission, which is supporting our members and their patients. Um, we also consider who decides, um, our board, our executive leadership team, uh, and what can we offer? And certainly one thing we've learned is that just saying, how can we help? is not always helpful. So this is our ASCO crisis response framework, and this helps us decide where and when ASCO responds. So the first question is, can ASCO positively impact the situation? Uh, question two, has the WHO declared a grade three emergency? Uh, which is that a single country or multiple country emergency requiring a major or maximal WHO response. The third question we ask is, is the country a low or middle income country or is the affected region a vulnerable one? Uh, our fourth consideration is, is there a reported impact on cancer care? Because that's where we as a professional society really can play a role is on cancer care. Uh, fifth consideration is, are ASCO members in the country or region engaged in the crisis? And then are ASCO partners responding? Our national or regional partners, the Union for International Cancer Control, or the World Health Organization? And this is a menu of options if we decide to respond uh, that we can use in our response. We can issue a formal ASCO statement. We can publish member stories. We can provide translated oncology materials. We can host briefing webinars. We can convene a response network with regional partners. We can collect and disseminate a list of available medical facilities. We can activate with the American Cancer Society a volunteer call center. We've provided dues, journal subscriptions, and registration relief for our members in conflict zones. Uh, we can provide direct aid and grants to responding organizations. And another option is that we can fundraise. I want to point out that this crisis response framework that we've developed applies to all crises, so it could be conflict and it could be natural disasters as well. And I show you this example of an ASCO statement that we prepared in response to the recent Turkey and Syria earthquakes. So our crisis response framework um, does cover conflict, but it also covers natural disasters. Now, ASCO has established four at present regional councils. Uh, and our regional councils can serve as partners in crisis response if the crisis is occurring in a region in which we have a regional council. Our first regional council was established in Asia Pacific, then Latin America, um, Sub-Saharan Africa. And we've just recently estab established a Central and Eastern Europe regional network but this had actually been in the works before the war in Ukraine began. And we relied very heavily on that uh, regional council that hadn't been officially launched, but we had already selected representatives 
from the member countries in the region, we were just about to launch our Eastern and Central European Regional Council uh, when uh, the war broke out. So one of the first things we did was we issued a statement on the war in Ukraine. And we said, ask of stands with Ukraine's cancer community, demand safety for patients and healthcare workers throughout the region. We then very quickly partnered with the American Cancer Society in two primary ways. The first is through patient resources. At the time, uh, there were many Ukrainian cancer patients that were um, moving out of Ukraine or actually moving within Ukraine from the east to the west. And all of a sudden, um, uh, patients, their caregivers, and the doctors on the receiving end were looking for more information uh, about how to treat the cancer, how to support the patients. So we quickly uh, made our patient-facing resources available in Ukrainian, Polish, and other regional languages. We did a quick translation and we put them on the American Cancer Society um, website and our cancer.net website at ASCO. We also were starting to get phone calls, phone calls from, for example, doctors across the border from Ukraine who said, this patient has just gotten radiation therapy. We don't have oncologists in our city where they've ended up we need to know how to manage them. Questions like, are they radioactive? Do we need to treat them differently? And we needed to be able to answer those questions. So the American Cancer Society has an established US National Cancer Information Center, and they have specialists on call 24 seven. And what ASCO did was we asked our members especially those who spoke Ukrainian, Polish, Romanian, other Eastern and Central European languages, if they'd be willing to volunteer to cover certain time periods, if a call came in to the volunteer clinician corps um, that we needed a physician and oncologist to help answer. And because phone, <laughs> excuse me, didn't always work, these patients were on the move, et cetera. We allowed um, chats to occur or emails to occur. And to keep down any phone costs, we established local numbers throughout the region as well. On ASCOScancer.net site, I've mentioned that we translated a lot of patient materials, um, but we also created some new materials. Um, here's one on coping with war and cancer. How do you take care of your mental health during the Ukrainian crisis? Um, we also had some uh, articles on managing your cancer care during an emergency, an emergency information wallet card, and an emergency checklist for patients with cancer if they were on the move. And so we paid a lot of attention to supporting the mental health of patients. Another excellent partner that we immediately <clears throat> collaborated with was the European Cancer Organization. They approached us and said, can we work together to try to support oncologists, those who care for patients with cancer, as well as cancer patients in the region? So we immediately created an ASCO ECHO Ukraine Crisis Steering Group. On the right is a uh, a Zoom call that we held on March of 2022. Many of the people on uh, the Zoom call were the planned members of our ASCO Regional Council representing uh, Romania, Ukraine, Poland, et cetera. Um, so they jumped right in to try to help. And then we broadened our special network on the impact of the war in Ukraine. We worked with the World Health Organization and the European Commission. Um, and ultimately, we had over 200 plus professional and patient support organizations that joined this effort. The co-chairs included the ECHO president, the ASCO president, and Richard Sullivan, who spoke earlier in this conference, who served as the WHO emergency committee member so we could be assured we were getting the latest, most accurate information about what was happening specific to cancer in Ukraine and the surrounding countries. 
these are the logos of just some of all of the organizations that signed on, joined on to this special network and continue to be part of the special network uh, to this day. And then sometimes we use our own connections. And uh, this is a cancer letter article that was published March of 2022, right after uh, the war began, um, that I wrote as I had actually uh, started my career in global health with a breast cancer project in Ukraine back in uh, the late, uh, uh, I guess it was um, uh, 90s, um, 1990, a long time ago. So I wrote a piece after connecting with patient advocates and clinicians in Ukraine um, on reflecting on 25 years of collaboration and friendship with cancer patients and physicians in Ukraine. So sometimes we go beyond our professional organization and use our personal connections and ties as well. This is a picture of a conference of weekend. You heard that I founded the Women's Empowerment Cancer Advocacy Network. Um, uh, to bring together breast and cervical cancer patient advocates. Um, this is the Eastern Europe and Central Asia weekend summit that was held in Kyiv, Ukraine in 2017, uh, which is the last time uh, I was in Ukraine. Now, here's another important thing that ASCO can provide for our members. We can provide a forum for members in conflict zones to relay their information and perspectives from their region. We can do it in the ASCO connection and the ASCO post. So what I've shown here is an article from Tigray on war inflicted crisis and cancer care, the case of Tigray written by our colleagues from Tigray. Um, here are a couple of articles uh, just published in the last month or two regarding the conflict in Sudan. This one, Cancer Conflict and Catastrophe, A Cry for Help from Sudan, a Country at War, and then one on how war has disrupted the management of patients with breast cancer in Sudan. I think this is a very important forum um, that we offer so that we can hear directly from our colleagues, from our members um, in these conflict zones about what's happening and how we can help. Additionally, we can provide a forum for members in conflict zones to communicate with and learn from each other. This is an article that was published uh, shortly after the, the Ukraine war started um, from an ASCO member um, from Syria who talks about lessons learned from the Syrian crisis for cancer care uh, as they could apply to Ukraine. And the same ASCO member, uh, Dr. Atassi, has reached out about writing a similar article related to the current Gaza-Israel um, conflict, um, trying to help members in the region uh, understand lessons learned uh, from Syria and to provide support to them. So, um, of course, our latest conflict uh, in Israel and Gaza, we issued a statement right away, and uh, our response to date has included that statement. We did direct outreach to all of our members who reside and practice in the Palestinian territories and Israel. We've done direct outreach to selected members um, in neighboring countries to try to understand um, it, how their country is receiving patients, how they are uh, helping. And um, we've been in direct communication with on the ground sources, um, Medicine Sans Frontier, the WHO, humanitarian aid, NGOs. And we've been in communication with our ASCO partners, um, the European Cancer Organization, the American Cancer Society, the Union for International Cancer Control, to see how we can work together to provide support for our members and their patients uh, during this conflict. So uh, with that overview of the role of professional societies, specifically ASCO's role and experience in supporting cancer care, I would state that this is what ASCO says. Um, 
whatever and whatever conflict or major natural disasters disrupt life-saving medical care, ASCO calls on the global cancer community to come together in support of cancer patients whose lives are impacted, as well as those healthcare professionals selflessly providing assistance, often at their own peril. And with that, um, I would be happy to take questions um, about the role of professional society and ASCO's role in supporting our members and their patients uh, in conflict zones. Thank you.